after you make some adjustments, but Jackie Bradley Jr. pops it up. Long run for Cabrera. And he made the play. Oh, he made the play. High fly ball. Deep left. There it goes. Staring into history. He's done it. He has done it. 62. Aaron Judge is the American League single season home run leader. The AL King. Case closed. Yo, what's up, everybody? And welcome to the newest edition of the Bronx Muchachos podcast. It's your boy, Mark. And we got everybody with us tonight. We got Danny. Here. What's good, everybody? Yo, we got Alex. Hello, everybody. And we got Dave. Or we thought we had Dave. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Dave, is, Dave, Dave is in the background somewhere right now. But everybody, guys, you What's guys. going on, everybody? Point. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah, everyone, you guys know the drill. Rate, subscribe, review, like. Hit us up, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Odyssey, Amazon. You guys know the places. You guys know where we're at. Give us the love. Give us the five-star reviews. Give give us a review. Give us everything you want. Uh, if you're watching right now live on YouTube, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Come join the chat. Let us know what's going on, what you're thinking, what's on your mind. It's good times. Um, as always, our first uh, or this first segment is brought to you by SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the best way to browse and find all your seats that you want. Concerts, uh, live, live venue stuff, sports, the works. Go to, go to SeatGeek. You know where to, you know where to go. Um, use our promo code, Bronx Muchachos, all, but all capital letters, so you can get a discount on <clears throat> your first order. All right, boys. Um, Yankees had an interesting... All star break, you know, it started off at the end of in the Sunday with firing of Dylan Lawson, and then short time later we get Sean Casey, the mayor, as our new hitting coach. So, Danny, I want to switch to you first. What are your thought? What are your thoughts about about Lawson getting fired and then Casey coming on? Because it seemed like they had Casey. Sean Casey was was they circled the wagons on him real quick, and I I heard the story that they were they actually were talking about getting him in the offseason as well. So what are your thoughts, Danny? Well, I mean, we kind of spoke about it with Scott a couple of weeks ago, just talking about philosophy and how much a hitting coach is involved in the everyday um, uh, role when it comes to, you know, hitting. Obviously, Boone is going to say, like, hey, you know what, they go over film and do all, all this stuff. Obviously, it wasn't enough. <laughs> like, we see so much regression from a lot of our main guys. So – I'm glad that there was some accountability. Ultimately, I think he's a scapegoat because, you know, Cashman uh, didn't really – hasn't built a great roster. And I, I'll, I'll kind of stick on that until I'm proven otherwise. Um, so if, if this team takes off in the second half, then maybe it was a philosophy, uh, a Dylan Lawson type of thing, not uh, meshing with the players. Uh, the Sean Casey, he's a, it's a great hire. Like we've been seeing him for 15 years on LB Network. And he brings the energy. He's he's super knowledgeable. He understands hitting, the mechanics of hitting. If you look at his career, um, he, he had 300 multiple times, over 1,500 hits. He mm -hmm. walks more than he struck out for the most part. So those are all aspects of hitting that we need um, to be better. We need to get on base. We need to we need to be better in terms of contact. Um, but runners to scoring position. Uh, so. Hopefully he, he brings along a, a philosophy that can translate to the players, that can um, translate to success. Like, we got to get Giancarlo going. We got to get Rizzo going. We got to get DJ going. There's mm -hmm. a bunch of vets that we have to um, see them turn it around in the second half. Uh, but I think it's a good hire right now. Um, infectious energy. That's another thing about Sean Casey, which I really like. Dylan Lawson just seemed like, uh, you know, whatever is going to happen, happens. So. Uh, hopefully the, uh, he fires um, 
uh, a light under these guys' butts and get a really good second half going. And that's the reason why I'm wearing this, man. Savage is in the box. We got to get back to this. We have to get back to this in 2019 if we want to be even consider a World Series, a playoff spot. We're out of the playoffs right now, so we got to get back to being savages in the box. So uh, that'll be the second half theme, in my opinion. Interesting, interesting. I like where you're going, everyone. There, Danny, I really do. But I'm not taking my savages out of the box shirt out of my closet yet. I'm sorry. That's saying that's going to stay away until this team proves it. But you're 100 percent right. Like Casey's a he had a lifetime average of a 302. Like the, the man knows his stuff. OP, OPS was an, an 814. Like, come on. He he knows what he was doing when he was batting. And hopefully it goes back into a culture of us not going crazy, swinging early, relaxing in the box, being more comfortable in there, getting more into batter situations over pitcher situations. Why give the pitcher advantage? It's not worth it for us at all. But I mean, I'm I'm in I'm in hope. I really am in hope, but like it, it still hurts to know that you know we lost two out of three to the Cubs. Like it, it still hurts, and like that was really probably the nail in the coffin for for the, the ex hitting coach because like let's be real, like they weren't doing trash for like two weeks, and like yes, people want to put other blames. I was like, I'm right there. It was, I, and when it comes to that whole series, like especially the last game against the Cubs. It was a bonehead move by Boone for what he did. But let's be real also. There was not like the team's actually hitting anyway. They're not doing their job. So if you're not doing your job against insufficient, like subpar teams, we should not be worth it. So we got to change something. And this is the change. And hopefully this is the spark that this team needs to actually make a good run. And possibly we do do good in the trade value which we'll find that we'll talk about that later on, of course, but hopefully that goes well. And if that all goes well, we could see what happens, but I'm still in the mindset. Like, you know what? You got to show me something. Cause I'm not a very happy camper. How about you, Dave? So yeah, couldn't agree more. Sorry about the technical difficulties I was dealing with, but seems to happen on Thursday nights whenever we do this, but whatever. Um, yeah. So there were three things that really stuck out to me that was pretty much signaling the end of Dylan Lawson as the Yankees hitting coach. The first one was the whole Anthony Volpe changing his approach at the plate thing, why Austin Wells was figuring it out and not the three hitting coaches in the dugout that are paid to figure this out uh, was really a red flag to me. Um, the other thing that was a red flag to me was when you hear Aaron Judge is using an outside the organization hitting guru instead of the actual hitting coach for the team. That was red flag number two. And the lack of offensive production for the last two, a uh, year and a half that Lawson has been here has been alarming. It really, you know, to me, the big eye opener was when Aaron Hicks went to Baltimore and all of a sudden can hit a baseball. Like, what did they miss? What were they not able to figure out? So I, I'm... I'm excited about Sean Casey, lifetime 302 hitter, especially during, you know, the quote steroid era of baseball going up against pitchers like Randy Johnson, Pedro Martinez, pitchers of that caliber to have a lifetime 302 batting average is pretty impressive. Um, This is the first time the organization has hired an outside body since Matt Blake was hired as the pitching coach. So I'm encouraged by it and hopefully it's not doing too little too late and hopefully Casey is able to help this offense turn themselves around and press forward into the playoffs the remainder of the season. No, I agree with you. I agree with what everybody was saying here. Um, I think with Kate, with going back to, to what you were saying, Dave, before about Dylan Lawson um, for years, everybody, every, all the, all the big, all, all the players are using their own hitting gurus, you know, like uh, Stan has his own guy. Everybody has their own person to work with, so it's kind of like them not going to to Lawson. And it does that doesn't that's not one that moved the needle for me. It was more his approach that I think was the biggest problem. It was too analytical his approach, and it was kind of he wanted everybody to be the same type of hitter. So what works for Darren, what works for Aaron Judge and like Rizzo and a Stanton and a Josh Donaldson when he was not the Josh Donaldson that we have on the Yankees, though it worked. Though his approach worked for those guys because they're power hitters, but it doesn't work for 
LeMahieu. It doesn't work for a Cabrera. It doesn't work for a Volpe. It doesn't work for a Peraza. It doesn't work for all these other guys because it's not because they're they're make they're they're he's having them all them attack the pitches early in the count and then lay off later on. And it was it was the the numbers that they that the Yankees had on offense were wildly crazy. They weren't taking pitches. They weren't working counts. They and when it came to hitting fastballs, they were one of the worst teams in hitting fastballs. And they were just they were looking for certain. They were told to look for a certain pitch, and they and when they weren't getting it, they weren't attack. They weren't being the Yankees that they should be. And let's face it. I mean, we go we talk about it in the old days, but the old the old Yankees were you you work the count, you run the you get the pitcher out of the game by the fourth fifth inning, and you continue on from there. And you you know even though nowadays it's a there's more of a an emphasis on on having more bullpen arms than there are even starting pitchers, but I think that you take everything what Nelson was doing and then the simple fact that these professional players they didn't want to also listen to a guy that never hit that never played major league baseball before. He never you know he he was a career minor leaguer and he never went through the grind that these guys are going through. So he didn't have that kind of connection. So I think you put everything together. Um the move to go to a guy like Sean Casey who has that who can talk to them mental about the mental part of the game that he's been through. That he's been the guy that's hit 300, like we said, a bunch of times. And he's a, he's well-respected as well. I think that is, the, that is the perfect move to make. It is a nice – and the way Sean Casey is talking about, he's going to bring old-school tactics back while incorporating the analytics that are to, in today's game. And that kind of blend is exactly what you need. You can't go all numbers – Versus what the what the heartbeat of the game is. So let's it's it'll be it'll be great to see what what Sean Casey brings to the table and how he can blend the, the two worlds together. Which if and if that's the case, then that's going to be a recipe for success in my book. For sure, I like the, the biggest thing with with a guy like Casey. I think Mark, you already touched on it. It's, it's definitely going to be that that mindset, the philosophy, the approach. Um, if we look at down up and down this order, obviously the batting averages are subpar. I mean, you got DJ hitting like 219. John Carlos hitting yeah. about 204, right? So obviously batting average is not like a huge thing, but they're they're not even doing baseline things to make the slugging worth it to make the on base worth because they're they're not <laughs> there's not really much of any of that going on period so uh we got to control the strike zone better and we got to impact the ball um and, and hunt the heater sean casey said that already hunt the heater make solid contact and try to put the ball in play at the very least and um let's see what happens No, that's too. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. I mean, right now, I mean, I mean, every everything's all go. I mean, every, not just not just Sean Casey, but I think Boone has to has to has to know what's going on. He has to put his foot down on the gas. There's no, well, let's we can punt this game. There, there's no more punting games the rest of the season. He's got it. He's it's every game. Every he's got to have that Joe. It in a sense like a Joe Girardi mentality where every game is your last game. And Joe Girardi wore wore that game wore that from game one to game one sixty two or the final game of, of whatever playoff game he was managing, like it was he lived and died with every game. And I think right now Boone needs to actually adapt and adopt that yeah. kind of process. But one way one thing to help adopt this kind of process is now that the All Star game is past us, we are now into trade season. What and, Mark? One more thing. One, one yeah, more thing on. about this. So. Um, when you talk about playing every game like it's your last game and everything like that, like I, I don't want to hear any more about scheduled rest days. I don't want to hear any more of this stuff. They, they, there's no reason why these guys can't play every day or almost every day. I don't mind a rest day here and there, but enough with when a guy gets hot, you bench him or he ends up on an IL stint out of nowhere. Like I was watching game six of the 96 World Series just to see how – the other day, just to see how these two different eras of baseball compare and contrast with each other. You had Daryl Strawberry out in left field playing with a broken foot in game six of the World Series. There's 
no reason why these guys can't play with a, bu- a couple of bumps and bruises. Not saying that Judge's injury is insignificant, tore a tendon in his foot, <laughs> can't walk, get it. But I, I don't want to see any more. Well, he has a scheduled rest day. No, it's the second half of the season. It's the dog days of summer. You're fighting for a playoff spot of which you do not occupy right now. So enough is enough in my book. We all okay. know that's not going to happen, though. Yeah. It, it, I don't care. It needs to happen. It needs to happen. They not. need to get back to the old school that, Yankees baseball. I mean, I'm, I, 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 I get you, Dave. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. It's not, it's not. It's not. But I do agree with you, though. They do have to change something, though. I'm not going to say the whole rest day thing, but like they do have to change something. They have to have to put their – they got to put the, pe- the, the pedal down. Okay, They got to be ready for this because I believe correctly, it's about 71 games left for the season. Give or take, and with that many games, like seventy, like yeah, I think it's around there. Um, yeah, we got us, we got the season, and like what we got the Rockies, the Angels, Ro- Royals, Mets, and Orioles, and then we and the, the month in the Rays. Houston, like, Houston, you know, and LA. I'm just, I'm just doing, I'm, I'm just oh. doing the month. I'm just doing the month. I'm not doing the whole damn season, Dave. <laughs> but like we, we have winnable games in there, and we also have games in there that are very losable games. So this team needs to show what they got to do, especially this month, before even hitting what we could do without Judge. Because let's be real, if this team cannot do it without Judge, I don't see the way it's going right now, and the way that the words have been going, the whole, the, the, the everything in the grapevine, the words in the grapevine, that his recovery does not look like it's going well. Let's be real, and if the recovery does not look like it's going well, and it looks like he needs to have surgery, we need to know what this team has to do now. Because if this, if he needs to have, ends up having to have surgery in the end, in the off season, and if this team, season team looks like crap. Let's be real. Had the surgery earlier then, and it called it a wash. But if this team could have come up with a nice good run from this month on, you know what? Yeah, I would like to see Judge back hopefully by the end of August. If he's not back by the end of August, this team's not going to do anything. We all know that. Like, this team revolves around the captain. And without the captain, we've already seen this team is trash. It's a 500 team, period. Mm-hmm. Bottom line, it's not even uh, very mediocre. Ho- hopefully. But that's without, that's without yeah. us hitting, though. Yeah. Like, if, if we actually turn it around and actually get some, correct, you know, better players in yeah. left field at third base, like those two glaring positions, uh, mm-hmm. maybe an offensive catcher. Uh, but we'll, we'll talk about that when we're going into the deadline. I 1, think that's what we're, yeah. we're kind of getting into. So I, I, I think um, you're right. You're right. Yeah, we, we need to improve the players that we have because obviously Oswaldo Cabrera is not going to cut it offensively. And even de- defensively, he's taking a step back this year. Um, IKF is who he is, right? We're not going to expect anything more than what, what he's giving us because this is peak IKF, okay? He's going to he's gonna hit 260. He's going to barely get on base, but, you know, he was provide stolen bases. He'll give you adequate defense in the corners, and plus defense in the infield at third base specifically. But other than that, you know, like, he's he's a bench player. We need to improve the, the areas of real concern, outfield, like I just said, left field specifically in third base. Well, th- okay, Danny, so let's let's go with this for a second here. Uh, <clears throat> trade, the, I, was, I, was, I was kind of alluding to before, this is trade season. So – what's some of the moves that you're looking what's what's a what's the big move that you're looking to to have made well and the one guy that i yeah, yeah go ahead yeah, the, no no i was gonna say the one one like we're not talking like give me otani for a bag of chips like give me the, the re, like give me the real give me a real <laughs> be nice. hardcore, give me a real be hardcore nice. tra- yeah give me a, the real trade that you want like legit yeah like full-on like something even even if it's gonna hurt it's you know, give me something, give me something real. Well, you know, first off, I'm not that guy. I I, I don't do the whole bag of chips thing for for an all star. That's the that's the most idiotic thing. The people who do that, you know, say it to a rock. Don't come to me and tell me that. Anyway, I'm gonna go walk away now. No, I'm stick around. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, man, Danny, like, that's why you haven't so, sent me any. You need to send me some some of those you know bag of chip um trades in fantasy. I might I'm say good. yes to them. I might say yes to them, sir. Well, Let's just remember what happened last, last place? year when they did this. I'm not, but I don't yeah, care exactly. either. <laughs> if, if anybody's in last place in our league, send me some trades. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll talk about it. But Mark, he knows um, what I'm doing. 
But for in terms of what like, I, I mean, I, I just mentioned at the outfield, a guy that's stuck out to me since pretty much April has been Lamont Way Jr. over in San Francisco. The thing with that though Goodness. is San Francisco's 49 to 41. They're, they're third in the West. They're right there in that third wild card. In this situation, it would have to be a bye-bye bye, bye type of trade. Mm -hmm. um, San Francisco, they need some starting pitching. They got Alex Cobb and, shoot, the other righty. I'm blanking on his name. This right-handed pitcher, got, that's really good. You got um, Lo Logan Webb. Uh, got Logan, Logan Webb. Webb, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Th those are their, their two dudes. They got a couple other guys coming up that's made an impact in the bullpen. But if we want to get a guy like Lamont Wade, it's going to take something from our big league club. Um, Lamont Wade, he's under control until 2026. Um, so that's this year. That's next year. That's 2020. So three years of control for a guy that gets on base. I have the numbers right here. Let me just pull it up real quick. Uh, that's – oh, fan graphs. All right. So he's getting on base at like a 40% clip. 60%, 16% walk rate, 18% K rate, which is well below league average. Um, all right. His runs created plus is a 136. Defensively, he's not great, but who is great in that big in that big outfield in 18 18C ballpark? Nine homers, 28 RBIs. Um, he's only 29. So he's right there in the prime of his career. Put him in left field, okay. Bat him anywhere from six to seven, maybe behind Judge or not behind Judge, um, in that in that leadoff spot. He'd be a really good leadoff hitter for us. We've been kind of searching for a leadoff hitter. Uh, so Lamont Wade Jr. for it's gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt for Nestor Cortez, uh, Richard Fitz, and, and maybe another pitcher. The thing with Farhan Zaidi, he's a great GM. And we're gonna get fleeced. Like that's that's my that's yeah. like my biggest thing. When when dealing with him, he's he's such a great scout. He has a great scouting department that he's gonna deep delve deep down into our system, and he's gonna pluck somebody that three or four years from now we're gonna be like, damn, we gave that up just like kind of like Tyro Estrada. We let him walk, and now he's their starting middle infielder. Mm -hmm. So that's my only fear. But I feel like a guy like Nestor Cortez could get us someone like Lamont Way Jr. All right. That's not that's something bad. What about you, Alex? What you what, what's on the docket for you? After seeing this Cub series, I'm gonna be very simple. Cody Bellinger. Like I'm gonna be honest. He's right there. Put him right there and left. Like put him right there and left and then we have our outfield. Yes, it's a rental. I get it. But if the big if of Judge comes back at the end of August, everything works out. We finally had he's a lefty bat. We all been saying that we want a lefty bat. Like it would help us out. It le legitimately. And if we don't get him in the trade, I need this team to go big on him in the offseason because like I feel and and we've done trades with the Cubs that have benefited us anyway and have benefited the Cubs that we could, you know what? And it won't be cost as much as, as Danny's. I'm sorry, Danny. It won't cost as much. Like if the Cubs are in the area that they're they're giving up for the season and they already are packing up and whatever, we could send them Josh Donaldson. Whatever is we'll we'll make sure that okay, we had 17 million for Cody. You know what? Josh has 24. We'll 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 do the difference so that way boom, you know, you you're not spending any more money than you need to spend money-wise. Everyone's happy. We're happy as Yankees fans cuz we finally get rid of Josh Donaldson cuz I don't care what anyone says. We all hate that guy. All of us hate that guy. <laughs> we hated him before the season started and we're going to probably continue hating this guy. Like, let's be real. So, and we could get Cody here. Hopefully, then he'll like it, understand it, be, be like his dad was here anyway. But like, oh, and then maybe a spark. It does that spark that we need. New batting coach, new hitting coach. I mean, and we have uh, and we have Cody Bellinger. Like, it could help the, help the team out. I'm not saying it's the thing that's going to break the bank, but it helps helps us out. First off, 
you know, the Cubs are not going to take on Josh Donaldson and all that why money. Not? Why not? If they're, if, why not? If, they're, if, if, they're if, if it's a wash, if it's a, if it's a wash, no. and we take the rest of, it's not take a the rest wash, of it. Though. It's, it's not a wash, though. Yeah, Alex, you would it's have not going to be a wash because then you have because yeah. then you got to pay. You got the buyout. You got to pay in too. So that's even more money. That's, that's more money and more money. Yeah, we would have I to attach the like, numbers of, on that trade though. It was not that bad. We would have to attach a legitimate prospect if we want them to take the money. We and we're talking if, like if anything, uh, then throw Nestor no. in there. I'm sorry, Nestor's done for the season. No, and, no, and no, 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 no. Throw Nestor in there. The, the old, no, 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 no. You don't trade Nestor for a rental. I would, you trade I, Nestor for somebody for a controllable piece. Nestor because probably Nestor won't be back control- to the, He might. He's on the 60 day. No, yeah, but he's working his way back. And by the time the trade deadline, hopefully he's ready to go because Man, it was a shoulder fun. issue that no, uh, he's gonna be ready, right? And he's already been an All Star. He's controllable through 2027, I believe. The only way you trade Nestor is for another controllable outfielder. That's the only way you trade him, not for a rental. There's no way, all right? And if you're going to trade Donaldson, you attach a guy like Peraza because of the money difference. Like, uh, Donaldson, I mean, uh, Bellinger signed by $20 million, So maybe 17 and a half. 17, 17. Okay, okay. So, so we got $8 million to pay for him. We still have, like, 10 to $15 million to pay for him. Donaldson, plus the sixteen million dollar buyout, eight million dollar yeah, buyout. Just, no, Stupid. the the Cubs are not going to do that. Cubs are not going to do that. The only way we get Bellinger is if we do like a, a Richard Fitz, uh, uh, um, Will Warren maybe, and maybe someone lower in in, in the in the totem pole because Bellinger is just a rental. I still say do it. The Cubs are going to laugh at you in the face. Dude, Dude, even but even for what you just said, I'm agreeing with what you're saying. I'm not denying what you're saying to, to give to give it up. I will still give up stuff for Cody Bellinger. I'm sorry, him. I would want him on the team over. Come on, he would probably have a better smart. That I'm not disagreeing. Yeah. I'm not. Yes, my trade probably would. If we could throw Josh Allison in there, 100. I don't care. Give him the other the other pieces too, because I just want to get rid of Josh Allison. 100. We all know this, but at least he'll have someone for the season. Blah blah blah. blah boom. But let's be real. If this happens and we got rid of it and we could get a Cody Bellinger and he does like it here and he stayed here and we'd have to go through the fight in the offseason to get him and we actually have a left fielder that we don't have. Let's be real. We, we He could slide right there. He's a center fielder, yes, but he could slide right there or left and he actually could play the position. It'll help us out. He could play center too. Yeah. And the offseason, we're going we're gonna to be out of we're gonna be out of a center fielder this offseason too. Mm-hmm. Cody Benjamin makes a lot of sense. He really does. It's just yeah. finding the right type of deal. I'm not going to disagree with you. All right, Davey boy, what do you got there? So I, I got to piggyback on Bellinger too. So there, there was no one else on this podcast that was more against signing Cody Bellinger this offseason than me. He last year with the Dodgers, he had 37 percent strikeout rate, and I was totally against bringing in another offensive plagued player to this roster. So seeing him being able to go to Chicago, figure some things out, turn it around, become his old self essentially has been really an eye opener to me. And um, he, there are reports out there to, of him talking about what it would mean for him to come here and play in New York since his dad played here for four seasons, mm-hmm. won two world championships and talking about how he would be comfortable here. And this is, I mean, this probably won't happen, but according to baseball trade values, this is what you're looking at. Chirinos is a minor league shortstop. Matt Crook and Alexander Vargas, matchup yes. value wise. So yes. I'm not saying that this is something that gets this deal pushed over the edge. I'm saying that this is a starting point, and I fully, fully support them exploring this option for Bellinger because I do not want to see Greg Allen. Willie Calhoun, Jake Bowers, or Billy McKinney, granted, these four have come in and held their own while the big guys have been out and injured. They've done a phenomenal job. They've done more than what they've been asked to do, in my opinion. But I do not want to see any of these four as a starting outfielder going possibly into the playoffs in October. Mm-mm. Give me a guy that's a former MVP and center fielder that has playoff experience. And a World Series. Gold Glove. Right? Gold Glove, too. Yeah, absolutely. He's also a World Series champion. Let's not be – it might be COVID, yeah. but it's still a World Series yeah. champion. This is true. 
So and he was and a rookie, he and a rookie year. That yeah, season, no, he, he wasn't. No, no, NLCS MVP. Wasn't oh, he an NLCS? Maybe. I feel like he was in 2020. I think he was the NLCS MVP because the World Series, right? Because the World Series MVP was was uh, Corey Seager, mm-hmm. right? And he so. was a former former MVP, former uh, Rookie of the Year, I think, too. Mm-hmm. Silver yep. Silver Slugger. He, he was 2017 Rookie, rookie of the Year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it wouldn't hurt, it would not hurt, and he's already has Yankee numbers anyway. He's shown in the past that he he has the Yankee the numbers to be a Yankee. So it's like, yeah, he had a a, a bad year, a bad season. It is what it is. Oh, no one's oh. perfect. He had a few, he had a few bad seasons, but no one's one's perfect, no one's perfect. But let's be real maybe the pinch putting the pinstripes on there rejuvenates him. And he he was already he's already rejuvenated in in, uh Chicago. Come on over and have better pizza, yeah, yeah. All right, Dave, you were you were piggybacking off of that. I know you had a different, I know you had a couple other trades under your belt. I do have a couple, and I'm going to start off small, and then you can come back to me later for the, for the for the big one. So I feel personally our catching can use an upgrade. So after seeing the All Star game and really getting to look at Elias Diaz, I think the Yankees should explore going this route. Um, again, this is a prediction. Mark, this will make you happy. I'm going to trade Kyle Higashioka for Elias Diaz. Not saying that this gets it done, but. According to the trade values, this is what you're looking at. Um, he's got a little bit more offensive pop than Kyle Higashioka. He's got, according to his baseball savant page, his pop time is in the 61st pop time to second base is in the 61st percentile of the league. And looking at his offensive numbers, his extra base slugging percentage is 402. Um, and his extra base hit average is 255. His max exit velocity is down a tick from 111.8 to 110.6. And barrel barrel at bats is 5.2. Barrel percentage is 7.4. Um, I, he's a year younger than Higashioka. And I think that this is uh, something worth looking at to give us a little bit more offensive firepower behind the plate going forward how much so. con- how much control does he have was when is that he, much when is he a free agent uh let me take a look hang on or someone else can look it up and i'll keep going yeah, but that's where i'm right at now. that's where i'm at with the catching upgrade so question do you think this year being his year of being an all-star his first year being an all-star do you okay and he's been in since 2015 well actually let's yeah, he's been in since 2015, but really, realistically, what 2017 really had more yeah. than. So his he had more than two games. Nine but, years. He's been exactly. For Do nine you, seasons. Are you worried that this is just a fluke, really? Because like, let's. Well, no, because um, yeah, he's a year older. But remember, a lot of these catchers take a while to develop, mm-hmm. okay. and um, he's been playing in Colorado, and he's had somewhat average numbers as to playing in other ballparks. Like he's not really a power hitter. He's got nine home runs, 45 RBIs, 277 batting average, 328 OBP, 435 slug, and an OPS of 763 and 305 plate appearances. And I believe he's only played in about 80 games, 60 games this 80, year. Give or take. 80 games. Yeah, he's yeah. split in time with uh games this year and he's a free catcher. agent and after he's a free and he's a free agent in 2020 in 2025. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm 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 not against the trade option. I'm not the, I'm not against it or for it. I'm impartial to it as of right now. I mean, us as Yankees fans, we're going to get a better sight of him this weekend to actually yeah. see a little bit more of him, see mm-hmm. what, what what it's like in a real game, not like an All Star game. So yeah. let's find I mean, out. That that at bat he had in the All Star game. I mean, that was a bomb of a home run. I mean, that was not a cheap home run. That thing was crushed. <laughs> I mean, I get it. I mean, I, 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 I get it. I, I really do. I'm not going to disagree with any of that. But let's see what it's like. In, let's see what it's like in the in a regular game. You know, in a series, see what happens. In 2021, which was his quote unquote career year, power wise, 18 homers, 44 RBIs, mm-hmm. 18, uh, eight percent walk rate. He's only strike. He was only striking out 16 percent in 2021. 
This year, his bat, his balls in play is a career high, 327. So that explains the 277 batting average being a little bit higher than uh, his other years. He's not going to get on base a ton, but he's not going to strike out a ton. And that's kind of what, what you want that's out of you your mean, bottom yeah. of the order exactly. type, of, type of dude. Um, and the, the, the nine homers is nice. And the, the 45 ribbies are really nice. I know analytically people are not high on ribbies. I've always been a big ribby guy despite that because essentially it is a team – um statistic but it takes a little bit of a clutch cl- clutch gene to drive runs in so 51 rbis last year 44 the year before that so um he's been consistently like a, a 240 type of hitter he's gonna get on base at like a maybe 30 percent clip and he's gonna slug but he's yeah. gonna do it better than higashioka and he's gonna do it better than trevino so yeah, I, I like I, that trade a lot yeah, and I agree with you, Danny, what you're how you're saying that too. Like you yes, you don't ribbies aren't like the number that anyone cares about, really. Blah blah blah, like you said. Okay, but let's be real. Like you want your bottom of the whole guy to actually bring in like the hitters that are known to actually bring in runs that oh no, they're stuck there because they didn't bring because they brought in a run, but they're stuck. Someone to bring them in. So that and when it comes that. to runs to score position, our numbers this year are atrocious. Absolutely atrocious. The only guy doing anything with runs, well, two guys, but is Aaron Judge and Glaber Torres, and that's it. Hey, if we could get another guy doing some work in the bottom of, of the lineup, it helps out. Gives yep. a little bit of re- relief. Yep. All right, Marky Mark. You up, brother? I think you're up. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, I have a different outlook on this whole thing. I'm not looking for little pieces. I want, I want the sexy name. I want name. I don't. I, oh I, you know, gosh. Diaz is nice. He, He's he got the chips, nice. guys. Um, <laughs> no, no. no I'm, 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 you know what? It, if we're gonna, the way I see, I said this last week too. When we, we won't have week, a farm system. Um, left my after my this deal's one. not for Soto. So, but we, but my thing is this. If to right the ship, you have to make a big move. You got to go for a Juan Soto type of deal. But mine is not going for Soto, even though I think he, I think that's one of the main pieces we should go to. Is then he off right the table? now? There is one team that basically went out, or there's two. One's quiet. The St. Louis Cardinals are open for business, they, and we've made trades with St. Louis Cardinals before. We can. Harrison Bader. So there's there's no allegedly there. No, I'm talking about them being open what? for business since they, they just said they that said their bar is not going anywhere. They they've they've, they've announced that the, the the GM said they're open for business. So if they're open for business, they're open for business. So let's put let's get let's put a let's see let's see how open for business they truly are. Let's not go for just little pieces. Let's try to get like a Jack Flaherty and maybe and to solve to solve the back end of the rotation. Or he can, or he could be a long relief pitcher, and you go for an Aaron, Aaron uh, Nolan Arenado. Just get get those type of guys that cut that that's two birds with one stone right there, and you and you solve a bunch of problems right there. It's going to cost you a bunch. It's going to cost you probably an Austin Wells, a Trey Sweeney, and and a Will Warren to start with, and probably you got to throw in maybe a Kiner Delgado to go with it. It's gonna it's gonna hurt, and th- those. But that's what I'm saying. Like in order to make this team better, you're gonna have to make it. Tr- you're going to have to have something that's going to hurt you, like Juan Soto. Like for me, a Juan Soto deal starts has to start with the with the Anthony, Anthony Volpe's name in there. It's going to hurt you, and it has to hurt. And you're going to be and you're going to be. Oh, oh, do I want to make the deal? But you know, in the end, it's good. You're going to have that. That's the deal that you're going to have to make down the line. You're going to be like, uh, maybe, we should, maybe yes, maybe no. But no, right now there there has to be a, a drastic move that has to be made. I think that you go and get yourself. With C- with St. Louis, you get Jack Flaherty, you get Nolan Arenado. He plugs into third. He plugs into third base off the bat. You can DFA Donaldson. You can you can do so, you can move IKF back to, back to the bench. You can start moving other pieces around as well. But it's going something like that is the d- type of deal I think, and it's going to hurt. So I don't. Know, what do you guys think of something like that? So my first impression. Is that I'm not a big fan of Jack Flaherty. 
his his ERA, I'm not his ERA. His fastball velocity has gone down consistently. This is the first year he hasn't been hurt. And honestly, do I want another Luis Severino type? Like in 2019, he pitched 196 innings. In the subsequent years, 2020 obviously is a wash, but 40 innings. 2021, 78. 2022, 36. And this year is the first year he's pitched above 78 in two years. Like, I, I, I don't feel Not comfortable. Rough. I don't, yeah, I just don't feel comfortable going forward. And he's going to be a free agent next year. No, I, I'm okay with Jack. Like, Jack Flyer, you can stay there and be mid with, with St. Louis, honestly. Um, now, when it comes to Arenado, I think it's, it has to start with uh, a Dominguez type because Arenado's, you know, he's going to cost you a lot of money, number one. And it's going to be like Dominguez, Spencer Jones, Lil Warren, Clinton Beater. Like, just the list goes on for for Arenado. And maybe we may have to take from our big league club, too, because they, they desperately need pitching. Like, desperately. So, young, controllable pitching, too. Um, so that's where, and, and, that's, but where that's what I'm saying. Except with, that, like, that's gonna hurt. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm gonna say it's gonna hurt. Like, it, like the deal is gonna hurt, and that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Like, I threw out mm-hmm. a few names, but it's going. It, like, mm-hmm. it's gonna have to hurt you, and that's that's where yeah. that's where I'm. That's where I start with my trades. Like, it's gonna hurt, and there's yeah. gonna always be the Yankee tax to go with it too. So it's gonna hurt even more. Hundred percent. Um, Dave's chomping at the bit. About Arenado, because Jeremy Laracuente and I were kicking this one around today earlier, and I'm not a fan of trading for Nolan Arenado. He's 32 years old. I think still has five years remaining on that contract from uh, Colorado. Um, We all see what happens with aging third baseman, Josh Donaldson. And I do not want to give up future talent for something that could potentially age bad. I don't know if it's like Josh Donaldson PTSD that's stopping me from doing this. <laughs> um, because if you go and trade for Arenado, you have to DFA Josh Donaldson. Like, there's just no way around this. You cannot pay both of these guys. Correct. And so that's where I'm at with the Arenado trade. It, it looks nice, but eh. I mean, do you really want to trade for a 33, 32-year-old third baseman that may not age well? I just I just don't see how it's worth it. I just don't. When he's, the platinum, thing, like, when he's the platinum glove winner, like, what, the past 10 years? Like I'll come yeah. with that. <laughs> right. I mean, I'm sorry, like, but the longevity of it, I, I'm just not down with. I, I'm just Dave, not. I get I get what you're saying, but on the, when it comes to Josh Donaldson, we got him legitimately at the end of his career. We we got screwed over with that whole trade that we we got him at the very, very end. Like there's a possibility with the new hitting coach, things could change. I I, I do understand that. We'll see, but I don't know. Like Arenado is probably a good would be a good pick. Like the numbers don't lie realistically. What rookie of the year, Golden Glove, All Star, All Star, All Star, All Star, All Star, Golden Glove, All Star, All Star, All Star. <laughs> I'm gonna put this into context. We got Ichiro in what 2010? No, a little bit after that, 2014. Yeah, this like 2014, 10, 10 years too late. My opinion. right. This is this is screaming Ichiro. That type of deal. Maybe we we'll get a little bit more out of what Ichiro gave us out of Arenado yeah. for three years, get him out of St. Louis, which is not a hair's paradise, right? Like get him out of there. Bush stadium is a terrible place to hit. Unless you're Colorado on put, put him, Yeah. Put, put him at Yankee stadium. Let him, let him eat. I understand that. Cause he's going to provide quality offense. He's going to provide quality defense. He's going to be a great clubhouse presence because he's a winner. So all those things point towards an Arenado. Yes. But for me, the no's are kind of too big. Like, there's there's mad red flags. Like, I, I'm not sure about the red flags. That I could what are the red flags? Just what what are the red flags like? Five year deal with 100 million dollars left, and he's right handed. He's aging. Mm-hmm. We already mm-hmm. got Aaron Judge, who's 31. John Carlos Santon, who's 34. We see what DJ is at 36. We see what Donaldson is at 37. Like, why add to that? Uh, and it doesn't fix our biggest problem, which is the outfield. Question both. Their base well, and the outfield are two biggest problems, period. That's true. That is true. I mean, I, I I don't mind the trade. I don't mind the at least even the thought of like 
throwing like a couple of uh, the team actually threw out like a couple of offers to see what happens. I don't mind that at all. But yeah. The bigger thing is the outfield, and way I already said my part from the outfield, Mark. You know that for a fact. It's like I'm, I'm. We all know I was, if I believe correctly, I was even on him in the off season as well. Like I, I was already beating the name for Cody. Then I'm beating for it now. I'm gonna continue probably beating it in the off season if it doesn't happen. But, and this isn't a rental. This is a long term deal, Mark. Like it is a long term deal. But if the team throws an offer at it and sees what happens, it happens. And if it helps us win a championship in the foreseeable future, awesome. If it doesn't, well, damn, I'm gonna be pissed off about this trade. <laughs> yeah, I get, I get what you, I, I understand what everyone's saying, but I'm my, the, like I said, where I'm coming from with everything is that it's going to hurt, but it's a you have to make a you have to make a splash. You know, like there, there's too many middling pieces on this team that you need to have you need to it doesn't have to be it, you know i'm talking the superstar right now but you need to have a bit you need to make a big splash in order to rejuvenate the, not just the fan base but you possibly even the team because yeah right I, now it's, it's everything's kind of like it, it's stuck in neutral it's so, like yeah it's like i see it like how it's reminding danny of ichiro it's reminding me almost a little bit of giambi when we got giambi that like he was also a little old too. It's, in my opinion, he was old. He was old. No, he wasn't old. He was he was thirty one. He was in his prime. Giambi no, was Giambi had just yeah. Giambi oh, just what a uh, yeah. MVP, but, no, bro. No, still, like, oh no. my. <laughs> and Giambi came over and was and was and the, oh, oh wow, smashing. Yeah, no. What if Giambi's my dude? He just, what did he just yeah. do? He just did MVP too. <laughs> yeah. No, like you brought up the wrong tree. Mark and I will protect Jason Giambi at all costs. No. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> I disagree. You could disagree. <laughs> I understand you could disagree, but I'm seeing it in the positive on that. That's where I'm seeing it, Danny. You're not seeing it that way. I'm seeing it in the positive that it could help out the team. You're over here putting the, the negative into the Ichiro thing at the end of the Ichiro deal. I'm seeing it. Oh, as yeah, 100%. Though, as I'm, seeing it, I'm seeing it, though, as in the plus. That's why. I'm seeing it that it could be a helpful thing, just like it was when yeah. we got Giambi. That's how I'm seeing it. I, I mentioned three positive things for Noel Iron Ar Arenado. He's a Hall of Famer, right? Mm -hmm. He's a great clubhouse guy. The the, the defense is <laughs> extraordinary. It would help Anthony Volpe at short. It would help yeah. pretty much the entire infield. But the, or, the when, or, or, or when Volpe just... goes to second after Gleyber Torres is gone. Oh, God. That's a different <laughs> discussion. So, well, hold on. No, it's not because I got one for this. So, <laughs> so y'all want to talk about big splashes. So I have two of them. I'll go with the first. So let me just make sure I put the right thing up here on the screen. Oh, yeah. So, that yeah, there it is. So here you go. If we can't get Juan Soto, I'm open to the idea of Shohei Otani in light of recent uh, reports that are coming out today saying that the Yankees are looking like the front runner. This is what a trade for Shohei Otani looks like according to baseball trade values. You're trading Peraza, Schmidt, and Torres for that Shohei Otani. even come close to getting that done. I know, but it's a starting <laughs> point. Like I said, according Not even to a starting this website, point. this works. Yeah. But who knows? But everyone keeps saying, oh, we need Juan Soto. We want Soto. You want to see what a trade for Juan Soto looks like? I'm about ready to blow your mind. Yeah, because you got an extra year of control. Clayton That's Beater, why. Jason Dominguez, Glaber Torres, Anthony Volpe, Will Warren. Yeah, at it's a gonna hurt minimum. Yeah. I, I minimum. said I said last week. I said and just like that, it's gonna hurt if you're gonna make the trade for Juan Soto. Volpe Volpe is the first name on that list. And he's gonna and mm -hmm. even he's gonna be on there. And you you could probably interchange uh, Dominguez with probably with maybe Spencer Jones and a and a Wells, probably something along those lines. But it's gonna hurt you. It's gonna gonna hurt. And that's what I'm saying. Like. You gotta if you're gonna make these deals, it's not I, you know, yeah, it's great to get a like I said, it's great to, for for Bellinger like Alex was saying, it's great for D, Diaz even though I'm not I'm not sold on Diaz, 32 year old right now, he's 32 year old catcher. I mean, we already have. A hey 30 Dan, you're you're always hating on Higgy. I gave you a way out. I, hey, listen, I told you, <laughs> boot him to the moon and just and put and put the the elusive hey, Ben to Colorado. Rope. It's like you sent him to Colorado. It's like going to the moon. Hey man, like or, or, this, or at this point, put up bring Brent Rovert up there. I mean, the elusive Brent Rovert. Go to some best, the Spencer is over there. He'll definitely be in the moon then. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, well, yeah, no, I mean, 
listen, all these deals are gonna are gonna hurt. I mean, you were talking about Vol, you know, moving Volpe, moving moving Torres. You know, we I was reading uh I was reading some some uh, one of the scouts was, was talking about uh Roger Harris, who I'm I'm always crazy high on this kid. But they straight were saying like he's he's the best shortstop in the organization as of you know if he continues the way he's going. He's like a Lin, he's you know the comps to Lindor are astronomical, and I was told today by a good source that by the end of next week he should be promoted to low A ball. So mm. I mean, I mean we're mm. talking about he's and he's what nineteen I think he was what nineteen years old I think nineteen year yeah. old going to low A ball. I mean he's already in the complex league. I mean he's he's on a thirteen game hitting streak in the complex league. I mean he's well they they signed him two years ago so he should be turning twenty. No, he was signed. signed, a, he signed a, no signed to seventeen. Oh. Mm-hmm. And he was a yeah. September. He was a September, and he's a September baby too. So he signed. He signed at seventeen in, the, in when uh, January played. You know, played seventeen. I think now eighteen. I think he's eighteen, maybe nineteen. I don't. I'll have to double check all that stuff. But look, but he's he's look, he's there and ready to go. Look at what Jackson Holiday is doing for Baltimore. He's already in Roger. Exactly. <laughs> he's nineteen. He's nineteen years old, <laughs> and he's been raking everywhere he's been. And I just saw I saw one swing of his in, in the at the at the futures game and I, I was just and there he goes. And he was something, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and he just got kidnapped. <laughs> the aliens have come. Well Danny was making this into a into a and... Yeah, sorry about that. There he is. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, I just got Danny has out. my Danny has my internet problems now. It's annoying. Jump from but, Florida up to me up to Virginia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Jackson Holiday's a stud. If Roger Arias could be like anything near that, that would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, but for for Otani or even oh, so, I'm, I'm more fully, so Otani, I'm fully expecting him to be something something along those lines. I mean, the kid the kid defensively is just is just a stud. He's got a cannon of an arm and switch hitting. I mean, he's he's showing power on both sides of the plate too. And controlling his own. I mean, for a kid for everybody his own age right now, yeah, or even a little older, yeah, just all day long. But he and he and right and he's 18 years old by the way. He's he's 18 he's 18 year old. Oh gosh, so. Being state which also, which also makes a difference. That I think. Oh no, he's already stateside. He's stateside right now at eighteen. He's in the complex league. I'm so saying going in the Gulf Coast league. That's what I mean. Oh, you, he, oh, okay. I got you. I got you. The, the and uh, and I think yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah. And I think that Maya is coming is coming stateside too. To be honest with you, I think mm-hmm. he I think he's going to be. They're moving him to stateside. When all the, when these when these promotions happen, I think the promotions are happening next week. I think my A come I think my A come stateside as well. So I mean they're 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 looking to push some of these some of these prospects. So uh, hopefully like uh, hopefully like Jones and Wells and Dominguez they all get start getting bumped up and maybe Trey Sweeney gets pushed up as well, depending on what whatever they do with Praza. But that's that's a that's a minor league that's that's when we go minor league on the pod. Not right now. This is yeah, trade we'll this is trade time. Yeah. <laughs> um it for uh, for any deal with Otani, we don't have the capital. To just get Shohei Otani by ourselves, it would include a third team. Um, and I, I thought about team, yeah, I thought about <laughs> team that has a stacked um, prospect list, and I was like Baltimore, Baltimore. but they wouldn't help. They they wouldn't help us out at all. But nah, they'd be like, nah, mean, screw you guys. <laughs> exactly, you know, exa- you unless they're getting what? somebody in return. It's like they want yeah. you to do. We, you want us to do what? Help you bury yeah. us? No, yeah, no, yeah, no. <laughs> nah, we'll, we'll but, pass. Not, not man, not man. They're gonna take. They, they want Glaber Torres, and then they're gonna put the wall back to where it was. <laughs> the yeah, Orioles exactly. want like Anthony Volpe. <laughs> the Orioles will want Anthony Volpe going to them, like Joe or Jason Dominguez. Got it. <laughs> I got they, it. If the, if, the, if, the, if, the, if the Orioles take him, they'll 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 shift him right over to second. They take Volpe, and he'll go right to second base. Just move him right yeah, over there. They got Gunnar Henderson and Mateo, Jack- who are better shortstops. You know, Jackson Holiday too, at least on the way. Yeah, I mean they got yeah. they got they got some they got studs on that left side. It's ridiculous. Jordan Westberg is another guy that I see often. That's gonna be uh he's gonna be a stud. Uh, Colton Kowser, all these guys are like legit dudes. I'm actually I mean, gonna be at the game tomorrow when Scranton Wilkesbury played the Tide. So 
you guys will see some content that way. Uh, I'll be right behind our dugout um, and right by the on deck circle. So I'll take some pictures of like a Sevon Florial or, you know, whoever, a Chaparro, uh, guys like that. So uh, just be ready for that on Twitter and Instagram and all that good stuff. And don't forget to say hi to our boy Lockridge when you see him. Oh, yes, yeah, right. Brandon's up there. I'm going to hit him up. Brandon's raking, dude. I was talking to him last night. Yeah. He, he's bat. He's he's killing it in AAA, killing it in AAA. Yo, let him know I'm gonna be there. I'll I'll let him know. All right, I'll let him know. Yeah. All right, and he wears, want- he wears yeah. Danny. He wears number ten. All right. So you know what? So we're talking. You know, as we're talking minor leagues, you know, we'd be remiss not to at least touch upon the fact that the MLB draft just happened. So with the first, with the Yankees' first round pick, they picked up a kid named George Lombard Jr. His uh, father is the bench coach for the Detroit Tigers. Come, you know he's play, he played a, he played a few se- George, senior played a few seasons. Um, junior is a right-handed bat, plays shortstop, got a lot of power, about 6'3", 190. He's a commit. He's a Vanderbilt commit. So kind of a lot of. Uh, you know, Vandy, Vandy boys are Vandy boys. I mean, that's a great, it's a great program. SEC is a great program. Uh, I mean, we already took Spencer Jones from there. Uh, you know, Anthony Volpe was a commit and we got, and we were able to sign him. Um, he's got a lot, you know, high impact. He's got a, you know, he's got a power bat. He's, he, as he c- continues to build up, he, there's a good chance he might move off a shortstop and move over to third, but he's got a strong arm. Um, you know, he's right-handed hitter. He's got, like I said, ton of, ton of raw, raw pop. Um, he's got a long stride, as, you know, to be a better runner. He, he didn't, he didn't, he's the kind of kid that he's athletic. So he never, he didn't focus solely on baseball. He played soccer down in, um, uh, Gullo, I think what was it? Gullo, uh, uh, Gullo, you know that, yes, Gulliver prep. Yeah. Thanks. And he, and he, I think they won like a, they, they were, they were, a, they were a championship team for soccer and he played soccer for them. So, you know, he's got the athleticism, you know, he's got the stamina for the speed, which is kind of coming into the game again. Um, so it's just, it's, it's a nice little, it's nice. It's something nice. I mean, South he's down in South Florida. So, I mean, they play ball all year round. So and tons of academies and tons of, tons of hitting down there. So it's going to cost, it's going to cost him a l- little bit. He's going to be over slot to go there. So to go, to come to the Yankees. So I think a lot of the, a lot of the later draft picks, they're kind of, they were, they're getting them under slot value. So they're, they're building up the cash capital to get them. But I think I like the I like it. It's uh you know Yankees are very are known for building up the middle catchers, shortstops, center fielders, and then you can kind of move them from there. So if they as long as he signs, I'm kind of happy. He'll go to the FCL, which kind of helps out with you know there's a big log jam of middle infielders, especially right now in the FCL. I mean between you know Arias is still there, Delgado, Hans Montero, and um. Oh, I, I, there's a fourth one there. I can't remember his name, but you got you got four guys playing three positions, and one of them they, they rotate them around, and one of them plays DH. So it's a it's a good it's a good it's a good it's a good, it's a good, it's a good time to be to be that. But Danny, you had a you had a pick for for yours as well. Who do you got? Who's your who's your standout from the draft? Yeah, so obviously we didn't have a second round pick thanks to uh, us signing whoever we signed. I forgot who it was off the top of my head, but we did Rodon. get a. Rodon. Yep. There we go. Thank you. Uh, but we did have a fourth rounder, uh, Rock Riggio, and he's from uh, Oklahoma State. And he's a stud left-handed hitter, at least in my opinion. Does a great job of control of the zone. He did that throughout his entire college career. Um, he got on base at a 438 clip throughout his entire <laughs> college experience over there. Um, and playing in, in the in the Pac-12 or the Big 12, um, conference baseball wise, you're talking low A ball for the most part. Uh, that's a really good conference. And th- this past year, 18 home runs, 61 RBIs. He's not going to get you a ton of bags, so only seven stolen bases, but 335 batting average, 461 on base, 679 slug, go for a 1.139 OPS. Um, he's only uh 511, if that, All right? Well, hold on one second. He's 5'9", 180. So think of like a Dustin Pedroia type. Um, he's a gritty player that's going to play every day, and he's going to play either like second or left field. Those are the two positions he profiles at. Uh, but 
a gritty dude that's going to provide you uh, really good ABs, control the strike zone, and provide some power from the left side. So Rock Riggio, uh, maybe like a, a roof net or door, maybe at the, the baseline um, with a little bit more on base, but the power is going to be there. Or it could be at the very highest ceiling, uh, a Dustin Pedroia type. So uh, I like Rock Riggio. I saw him play, and he's a gamer. He's a stud. So I think that's going to be kind of a surprise pick uh, for the Yankees this draft. Didn't he? Do, and didn't he play well in the in the Cape this over the summer last summer? I think I I think I was so, reading that. Yeah, he... yeah I, I got the I got it right here. Um, at the in the Cape, uh, Ash he he didn't do too hot in the Cape this past year in 2022. Um, only 200 batting average, 258 on base. I mean, he still kind of controlled the zone with the, even with the low batting average, 339 slug. Um, so, you know, but that's that's after his first full season playing like elite college Division One baseball. Um, so, in that year, that was his first time playing like 90 plus games, uh, and then wood bat. So, um, we'll see how he doesn't. Well, he's not going to play the Cape this year, but. Uh, we'll see how he does probably in like low A ball. And I, I think it would translate. All right. I like it. I like it a lot. I, I think they, I think the, the, the Yankees had a low key good draft, especially taking, uh, you know, taking, taking the high end and, and special always in not having a second round or fifth round pick. So we can't compl- I can't complain about it uh, And you know, hopefully next year, they, you know, next year is supposed to be even deeper. The next year draft is supposed to be real deep. So, it's always good to see, but I think that's gonna that's about doing it for us tonight, Dave. Why don't you uh, why don't you take us home? All right. So thank you for everybody for tuning in, jumping in the comments. We absolutely appreciate that. Uh, shout out to everybody listening to us internationally, especially those in Costa Rica. Costa Rica just made the list and made our twenty first country being li- being streamed in around the world. So appreciate you all in Costa Rica listening to us. Also, check out our merch store. We got plenty of items for sale. Uh, we got your T-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, tech gear. Get it all there. Um, unfortunately, uh, tragedy struck um, my neighborhood this past week. Uh, we actually lost not only a neighbor, but an actual listener of this podcast. And uh, Dan Monahan uh, passed away unexpectedly um, this past week while in Colorado on a trip, um, he leaves behind his wife, Kimberly, and his two sons, unfortunately. Um, if anyone would like to help the Monahan family uh, raise money for the funeral costs, you can scan, if anyone's watching, you can scan that QR code in the top left-hand corner. We'll bring it directly to the GoFundMe page. And the details are also in the show description on YouTube and Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcasts. So, um, you know, it's, it's a tragedy when things like this happen unexpectedly. But Dan was a listener of this show. Got to meet him back in March at a get-together at a friend's house down the street. So our thoughts and prayers go out to the Monaghan family during this time of need. Um, and just if anyone can help contribute to help them get the help they need, please do so. We'd appreciate it from us at Bronx Machachos. Um, so for Mark, Danny, Alex, David, Bronx Machachos, signing off.